in the last two videos or the first two videos of pick assembly programming i promised you more examples and on the on this video that's exactly what we're going to do uh, i think on those two previous videos we did the first two examples where you were expected to re uh, to write zero on port a and write ff on port b and we also did where you had to configure port a as inputs and read the state of port a pins and write it to port b where port b was your output right so i'm going to continue now from the third example there all the way down just to complete um, the simple problem statements which we which i promised to to do for you guys now the, the question says draw a flowchart and write an assembly program to do the following we did the first two so the third one says read port a invert the value and write the results on port b meaning port a is going to be inputs the whole of port a pins are going to be inputs the whole of port b pins are going to be outputs we are going to read port a a complement the value you read and then you write the complemented value on port b that's basically what the question is asking of us so to get started um we can start by first creating an embedded project but before we write the program we have to draw the flowchart remember for you to start the program you first need to start with a flowchart as a beginner now for someone who already knows how to program we can go directly to to program it for something as simple as that example so we need to create a project so go to project and it's like project wizard and you click next select the pick i'm going to use the pick 16f818 click next now uh, in these videos we're using uh, assembly language so our tool suit will always be the mpasm tool suit so uh, select that one click next and then we browse here for where we want to save our project so under documents i'm going to create a folder there and then give it um okay the name invert open that and then my project is also in bed save the the project under that folder click next there's nothing to add click next summary of your project the device you are using the tool suit and the location of the file click finish now we need to add a source file where we'll be writing our code I can do that by clicking new file and then going to file save that file as under that invert i can still give it the name invert.asm the source file must be ended with a extension dot asm and then tick a little box there that says add file to project and then save now this is your asm file then it is part of your project and when you double click this it actually takes you to that now i'm not going to start writing a program but what i'm going to do is start writing the things which i said they are the basic things when it comes to assembly pick assembly program i haven't started writing the actual program but I'm just hitting the compiler here that I'm using pick 16 f 818 I'm asking it to make use of the file p16f818.py 
by NC and what goes at the end of your program is your end instruction. So with just those three instructions in place, if you build your program, it should successfully build. Always use absolute. It should say build successfully right it means you have successfully created a project you haven't started writing or writing a program yet we are still to write the program but we have created a project where we can start writing up now before we write a program it says here draw a flowchart we need to first draw a flowchart so i want to take you step by step let's start by drawing the flowchart so for that I'm going to use a free software, it's an online software, draw.io, browse to draw.io, go to that website, create a new diagram, you can browse and save this, so a blank one, so I give you then we say create a blank one. You can browse to your documents and then the inverter project where you saved your or the folder where your project is in. So I'm going to save everything in that folder. So I can give this a name and say it's a flowchart. This is my flowchart. now i have a window where i can save the flowchart right now uh, you should know by now that your flowchart always has to start with an oval shape that says start in it so i'm going to add text in that and then the text you will have also be start right so this is my first block of the flow chart this denotes the reset vector when your peak powers on and starts executing instruction it's going to start at this block of your flow chart right that's your start and now the next stage is where you now you want to initialize your peak now how do we want to initialize this peak the statement says you are expected to read port A, invert the value, and write the results on port B. And I said, if it says read port A, whatever you read is supposed to be an input. Then the whole of port A is going to be our inputs. And then um, the whole of port B is going to be outputs. That's what we need to do at initialize. We need to set up port A as inputs. We need to set up port B as outputs. So we go and do that um, here at the initialize stage. So we can add a text there. We can expand this a little bit. Doesn't have to be too big or minimize it. So this text has to be. So we'll see this is my any this is my initialize and here port A is equals to inputs port B is equals to outputs right and that's my initialize okay now
This is what I want to do. I want to minimize it. I want to minimize it. And then move it. There and then from this one, it's actually an arrow to that one. And now my text has to be inside there. That's my start. The reset vector this is where I initialize. And now, after making port A inputs and port B outputs, I need to now go read port A and then write on port B. So, to go and read on port A and write on port B, whatever I do on the I.O. pins, this is the figure or the shape I'm going to use, and then I want to add the text into that. And here, what we do is we want to read and invert whatever we read. We read it and we invert it. Or we complement it. Port A. So this is what we want to do here. We want to read and invert port A. And then the next thing is we want to write the grid on port B. Then we want to write the value on port B. Then we write to port B. So after we initialize, we go there and then from here we go here. Now, from this one, we want to keep on reading and writing. So we want to keep on coming back here. Some you can actually most of the time it is actually done this way. So let me just do it right. Take it there. Now <clears throat> this process is going to happen forever now if we wanted to read and write once we would have had end in your in your flowchart let's say we wanted to read and write once and then after that that's the end we will have a block here that says end a block here that says end right and then that will be our future. But we don't want to end. We don't we don't want to do this once and then go to the endless loop. Actually, it's not supposed to be even end because the end, although it is there in your code, although there's end instruction in your code, this end, the peak is never going to execute this because it is either it goes into an endless loop or it repeats the process uh repeatedly forever so we either don't have the the end instruction which will we never have the end block on your future you never have, although the program may end it, it is actually not ending it goes into an endless loop it goes into an endless loop so let's do this Because if it happens that the peak executes the end, you write your program in such a way that the peak will execute the end. Or that the program flow shows that the peak will end up executing the end instruction. Your peak is going to keep on resetting whenever it gets to that, uh, to that point. Meaning it's going to start from scratch. It's good. When it resets, obviously, it comes from here, initialize, perform the operation. When it gets the end, it goes back there. 
so it's sort of resetting itself so instead of that we want to keep on doing this or do it once and then be in the while in the in the endless loop instead of going back and do that all over again right now um this is our flowchart for what we need to do now let's go and do it let's go and do it um, in our program we need to start with start this is our reset vector so where is it in our program the very top our reset vector is org origin this is our reset vector and now we want to go to initialize now what you you can say is go to start or go to initialize for now maybe let me just call it start it doesn't have to be any specific name but the name must make sense whatever you are going with your six makes it now for us to set up the io pins so from from the origin zero zero the, the the first thing to do is to set up your io pins port as inputs digital inputs port bs outputs right digital outputs now for us to do that we need to go to bank one to set up our pins bit set file status comma rp0 this take us takes us to bank one and now that we are in bank one we want all port a pins to be input we can either start by configuring port a pins as input and at a later stage disable analogs or we can start by disabling analogs first so move literal to w o x 0 6 or 0 7 as i've shown in the previous video the value this value when we move it to ad con 1 ad con 1 it disables analog disable analog on port a pins right because those analogs are on port a0 up to a4 they are only on port a for peak 16f818 so we are disabling them now we can make port a inputs although it's already inputs on default all of port a pins we want to use them as inputs and then hence i'm going to move ff into this b this a actually so i'm going to say move w to file this a to make all port a pins inputs now port b pins i want them to be outputs i can do that simply by saying clear file this b right that will do it and then i'm done with at this point i'm done now with setting io pins i am now done with setting io pins i need to go read port a but now port a is in bank zero this a and this b for configuring the ios they're in bank one that's why i had to go to bank one but now to read port a i must first be in bank zero so that's what i'm going to do btfi status comma rp zero now it takes me to bank zero remember here i'm making all port b pins uh, outputs yeah all port a pins are inputs right here i'm going to bank zero by clearing rp0 of the status register now let's look at our um, let's look at our 
flowchart for once. Now, this flowchart right here, um, I can give this label a name. I can give this position a name and call it May. So if I say May, May it is actually at this intersection. Meaning that's where the program is always going to go. It's always going to go to main. When it returns or this area is going to go to main. See that intersection is main. So to go to main or to start my program or to demonstrate that, I'm going to have main here. And now at main, what do I do at main? I want to start reading port AN, inverting it. So there's a, an instruction you can use in a pick that directly does that for you. It reads and automatically com, uh, complements. It's called, or it is complement file. The file we want to read and complement is port A and save the results of that instruction in W. So basically that instruction does the two things. It first reads the state of port A pins, and then it inverts them, it complements them. The ones which are read as ones, they are changed to zeros. The ones which were read as zeros are changed to ones. And now, after reading and complementing port A, according to our sketch, we just have to write to port B. That's what we need to do. So, move that complemented value of port A into port B. Right, we have done that. Now, what is next is to go back to repeat the process at main there, as that arrow shows. So, we say now, go to main. That's the end of our problem. So, the end instruction it is still there. But remember I said the end instruction it's for the compiler. So basically this end instruction and the list instruction those are for the compiler to know that this is the end. The reason why I'm saying the pick will never execute this instruction. Let's look for example at this code. After you initialize you get to the main where you read port A you save the results into W and then you write those results on port B you go to main. Where is main? back at the beginning. You are going to end up in the loop here. The peak CPU will never get to execute this instruction. That instruction is never meant to be executed by your peak processor. Right. Now let's build this project. Nothing is wrong, thankfully. And I'm going to use um, peak simulator to simulate our problem right let me change the peak to the one we are using 16f818 and then go to tools macro control view that's our peak 16f818 and you can see ra0 up to ra4 they have analog feature there on default and all the pins like i've said in previous videos on default all the pins are analog are, are input section all the pins are inputs but RA0 up to RA4, because they have analog feature, they are on default analog inputs. The rest are on default digital inputs because they don't have analog capabilities. Right. Now, let's load our program. File, load. And then mine is at documents. And then it is inverted. The folder is inverted invert invert and then there's the hex file and now i can say okay let's run this very fast and let's start with simulation my port a pins are all inputs and the analogs have disappeared when all port a pins are off meaning they are all zeros port b pins are on that's what an inverter is right if A0 goes high, A1, a B0 goes off. A0 goes high, B0 goes off. A1 goes high, B1 goes off. 
A2 goes high, B2 goes off. If all port A pins are high, all port B pins are off. Right. First example, hope it makes sense. Uh, let's um, proceed to the next example. So I'm going to erase the whole of this problem. Have the basic things, three basic things you need. Two for the, to inform the compiler, the processor you are using, the end of the program, and then this, we are just making use of this file, which I explained on the other video. What is the purpose of that file? Uh, let's go and look at our next example. Our next example says, uh, implement an AND gate using port A0 and A1 as inputs and port B2 as output. Use the internal oscillator, the internal RC oscillator. Right. So here we want to implement the AND logic, the AND gate logic, the two input and uh, end gate logic using our input as port A0 and A1 and our output as B2. We start by a flowchart. Right. Draw a flowchart and write a program. So let's start with a flowchart. Now, to do that, we go back to our draw.io and now we want to create a new one. Let's create a new one. Or instead of creating a new one, let me just erase this. But it will create a new one if you want. I'm not going to do that. Let me just erase this. Right, start it still there. We now have this rectangular shape coming here. And now this time around, I want port A0. And A1 to be my inputs. Let me say RA0 and RA1 to be my inputs. And then I want RB2 to be my output I want RB2 to be my output here I can assume that or I can I can decide that all other IO pins should B output meaning all other unused pins both on port A and on port B I can configure them as outputs as well but they are not going to be used they are not going to be connected so that's my initialize that's what I need to go and do on initialize but now most importantly RA0 and RA1, they have analog capabilities. I will still have to disable the analogs there. And then that, I can still do it. I can also do it here. To say, this disable analogs. I can put it as part of my um, initialization. Right. From this, the question says, make use of RA0 and RA1 as inputs and RB2 as an output to implement a two input and gate. Right. So after setting our inputs and outputs, first we, we start now uh, need to test um, our pins. Remember an end gate, the output of an end gate will only be one when two inputs are high. If any of the two inputs is, is low, 
or if both of them are low the output is zero that's the logic of the end game so i'm going to do that but now by testing those pins we start by testing now we're going to test ra you can start by testing ra0 RA1. let's start by testing ra0 it doesn't really matter which one you decide to test first now if ra0 is zero based on the logic of the of the end gate uh, ra and also knowing that the state of input can be either high or low. it cannot be both at the same time or it cannot be any other thing it can be either high or low let's say if it is low i'm going to go to the left so i'm saying now if um the logic input of ra zero is um zero if the input level is zero i don't even have to test ra one if any input if any input on the logic gate if any input is zero the output is automatically zero but if one input is high you need to know the state of the other one state of the other one will decide if um we proceed so i'm going to now do this and see this one i'm going to test in here r a but now, if RA1 is 0, if RA1 is 0, still, I'm going to, but now, if, um, let's say RA0 is 1, and then RA1 is 1, we're going to have a new block here. If they are both one according to the end logic, our output has to be one. Okay, what is it going to be? Okay. Okay, I'm doing something wrong here. Let me just delete it. Okay, anyway, I'm going to do it this way. And now, here, yeah, let's just say now, the RB2 is going to be, our RB2 output is going to be high for the fact that both you tested now so after we initialize we come and test ra zero it can either be low or high. ra zero if it's high we come and test ra one if ra one is one it means we have ra zero as one and ra one as one the output of our end gate must be 1. And that's the only case our output will be 1. The rest of the other cases, it is when either RA0 is 0. If RA0 is 0, it doesn't really matter what is the state of RA1. Even if RA1 is 1, the output is going to be 0. Even if RA0 is 0, the output is still going to be 0. That's why on this case, I'm not even testing the state of RA1. Because regardless of the state of RA1, if RA0 is 0, the 
output of the end gauge is going to be zero. But if RA1 is one, still if RA0 is one, then that depends on RA1. If RA1 is zero, the output is zero. If RA1 is one, then we have one one that gives us logic one. And then we have to repeat this process over and over again. So we come and do this. And then this I can click it here. Until there. And then this one just both of them they go back here. And I can give this label main again. So that's our main. Now this is our new flowchart. We need to go and set up our AO pins at initialize, making RA0 and RA1 inputs. The rest of the pins, including RB2S outputs. And then we come and test the inputs and then we write to the output. Let's quickly do that. At start, it's always the first place of our code, it's origin. In hexadecimal, program memory address 00. zero. So that's our reset vector. And then go to initialize. Copy that. It's a label. Let me put it there and see. Build set file status comma rp0 here we go into build one and now we only want a0 and a1 to be input so move literal to w 03 that value sets bit 0 and bit 1 of the trace register making only bit only RA0 and RA1 as inputs, the rest as outputs. Port B, I don't have any inputs. I have port RB2 as an output and the rest, so I can just clear the whole of this B. I still have to disable analogs. 06 or 07 will do. That has to be moved on a con one then i can go and read port a and uh, a0 and a1 and write to port b because those are in bank zero i need to switch to bank zero bit clear file status comma rp0 here we are going to bank zero And now what we did here by moving three into trees a we actually made um r a zero r a zero and r a one as inputs the rest obviously as outputs here all port b these are outputs and then here i'm disabling analogs right now that i'm in bank one my main there on the flow chart once i'm in bank one at main here the first thing to do is to test um, RA0 right I can test it and either go to this side or go to that side now the instruction I'm going to test a single bit I'm not I'm not reading the whole of port A now I want to read only the state of RA0 so I'm using the bit set file or I'll use the bit set file you can choose skip if set or skip if clear depending on which can make your program easy now 
the thing is, let's look at the flow chart. If I say skip if set, when I skip, what's going to happen? I'm going to go to, okay, if I, I use skip if set, when the input is set, I'm going to come to this, start testing, uh, RA2. But if the input is not set, then I'm not going to skip. I need to create a label and go to this section. So I can easily do with the skip if set. I'll show you how that will make the code easy. If I say bitters file skip if set, and I say port A, RA0, or I can put comma zero there instead of RA0. If I say bitters file skip set, port A, RA0. If it is not set, if it is not set, according to the flow chart, if it is not set, I need to go and clear RB2 and make RB2 0, make it low. If it is not set, then I don't skip. And if I don't skip, it means I'm coming to that section. Uh, where is it? It's here. I'm testing RA0. If RA0 is not set, according to the instruction, I'm not going to skip. I'm coming to this side where I have to clear RB2. Meaning I have to have a label that says go to something. What's go what, what is that I'm going to do there? I'm going to clear RB2. So I can say go to clear RB2. But if it is set, then I'm going to skip that go to. I'm going to come to this side. So let's do it. Now if I don't skip, then I say go to clear underscore RB two but if it is set if r a zero is set then i come to this direction what is it that i must do i must test r a one i'm going to use skip if set as well so i can directly here see which test file skip if set port a r a one now, if port A is set, I'm going to skip the next instruction. This basically instruction says, skip if the condition is met, but if the condition is not met, you don't skip. Right, that's basically, you skip one instruction. It says skip one instruction when the condition is met or it's true, and if the, if the condition is not true, you don't skip. In this case, the condition is port A must be set because we are saying skip if set if we use skip if clear the condition was going to be if port a is whatever port a zero or one is zero not one and looking at this when port a is set i'm coming to this direction but if port a is not set i'm going back i'm going away to the very same label here is it if port a one is not set i'm going back to the very same label here easy right so in our program if it is not set go to the very same label here my rb2 but if it is set what then if it is set what is it that i must do if it is set what i must do i must set high rb2 so if it is set, I skip, skip this one, come here, and then bit set file, port B, R, B, 2, and then after setting R, B, 2, what does the flowchart tell me to do? Go to me. Go to me. So that's what I need to do. Go to me. Now, I'm just done with one part of the flowchart. I skipped and came here and tested, and then I skipped and came here and tested. But I had a label said go to what, and here I, I still had go to clear RB2. I still have to define what is RB2 and what must happen at RB2. At clear RB2, we must clear RB2 of our port B. Right, so I'm going to have that label clear B2 and at that point bit clear file 
port B R B two. And then after clearing RB2, it tells me that I need to go to May. Go to May. Same as the other one. So go to May. That's the end of your two input and gate. Let's build it and see. No errors. Let's simulate it now. Load this. Start simulation. RA0 and RA1 are inputs. Both of them are 0. The output is 0 on R RP2. If any one of them is on the, and the other is off, the output is still off. But if both of them are high, the output becomes high. If both of them are high, the output becomes high. You can do that. The Output is going to be low, but if both of them are high, the output becomes high. To input and all logic operation, use it the peak assembly problem. Right. Now, just to explain a few things for beginners in terms of how the program flows in um, assembly language, MPLAB, using MPLAB. When you write a program, your program will start from the origin, which you state at the top. Mostly, it will always be origin 0, 0 for the reset vector. And now, your program will execute from top to bottom, sequentially following the instructions. Your microcontroller will execute this instruction from top to bottom, sequentially, but paying attention to the instruction. For example, if we start here, what does this instruction tell us to do? It tells us to jump to where label is. So if it happened that we had a bunch of code here, the processor was going to skip the whole of this and jump to initialize. It was going to skip the whole of the code which was or which could have been in the middle here and then jump to initialize. But in this case, we don't have it. It is still fine. But this go to says the processor must jump to wherever this label is. So we are jumping to initialize. And then at initialize, still, the instructions are still executed from this location, sequentially, top to bottom, and until it gets another control instruction that um, forces it to jump. But if it doesn't come across that, these are executed one by one, sequentially, from where it begins to the bottom. So now, once we get to initialize, this is our first instruction. We say switch to bank one. It means now we're in bank one. Whatever we're going to do after this instruction, we do it while we're in bank one. We move this into trace A, making A0 and A1 inputs, clear trace B, making uh, B, the whole of port B outputs, move seven into W, move that to ADCON, disabling analogs. We clear five. We were in bank one. Now we clear B. Uh, RP0 of status, we switch to bank 0. Whatever we do from this point on, we do it while we are in bank 0. But we are still executing sequentially from top to bottom because we haven't came across an instruction that forces us to jump otherwise. Right. Now we come across this instruction. It says bit test file skip if set. Now, depending on the state of the input which we are testing, we can either skip or continue without skipping. Right. Now, this instruction allows us to skip one line of instruction, the following line of instruction, because that's what it says, skip, but you skip only one line of instruction. Right. Whereas a go-to directs you to a different location. The skip if set or skip if clear says skip only one instruction. Now, here, whether we skip or we continue without skipping, it depends on the state of the input. If that input is high, we are going to skip because it says skip if, it, if that input is set. But if that input is low, we are not going to skip because the condition is not met. That input is not set. We don't skip, we jump to clear B2. And then if we execute this, if we don't skip, our program is going to jump to clear E2. It's going to do this 
at clear e2 bit clear file rb2 still continues down but now it gets a go to it listens to a go to instruction go to takes it back if it wasn't of this go to it was still going to continue down but this go to instruction forces it to jump back up there and continue there down again right now let's assume that our input is set we were going to skip this one and then we come and execute this one. if our input is still set the other one are a one we skip this one we come and execute this one and then what is our next go to me so you need to be able to follow the program the way it will be executed in the peak to understand how it works and what is it that it will do right that's basically how you execute and um uh, what let's say analyze the program you execute or you follow it the way it will be executed by the microcontroller it's the easiest way for you to follow it through and understand what it's doing right so this is the end operation that's one of our examples the next one okay before we actually conclude on this end operation we said the question said here implement an end gate using ra0 and ra1 as inputs and rb2 as output use the internal oscillator it's not just a matter of the flow chart and the assembly problem this goes hand in hand with your circuit you must have a circuit that you or that that will be able to implement that end operation now I have a circuit here which I want to share with you and show you how your typical circuit for this problem would be. So for your end operation using RA0 and RA1 as inputs. So your RA0 and RA1, they are pin 17 and 18, right? I'm using pull down resistance and switches there. Actually this uh, schematic was done using paint it's a picture there are so many there are too many softwares you can use for drawing your schematics you're not limited to any any other I'm just trying not to promote anything or actually to even get into trouble with uh, copyrights and stuff like that. so for that case i'm using paint where pin 17 and 18 are your inputs are a 0 and RA1 and then your output is pin 8 which is your RB2 where the LED is connected right now VCC pin 14 goes to VCC M clear is pulled high through a pull up resistor for any program to work where M clear is involved and is used as the M clear pin this pin must be pulled high to VCC through a pull up resistor and then pin 5 is ground obviously for pull down these resistors are connected to ground and the led is also connected to ground you build your circuit this way and then you program your microcontroller now they said use internal oscillator in the example here for the problem they said use the internal oscillator for this end gate so that means in our program we need to put in the include the config instruction double underscore config in hexadecimal the value for the configuration and i said the value for our configuration if we want to use internal oscillator let's go back and get it watchdog timer disable it round out reset disable it use our rb3 as a digital io and then we want to use the internal oscillator with IO functionality on port A6 and A7. Now, once we have done that, our value there it is 3F38. That's the value we need to put in on the config. 3F38. Right. Build. And now once we have successfully built our program and you have programmed your microcontroller and then constructed your circuit as shown on this diagram 
you shouldn't be having trouble with your program or your circuit or your demonstration right the operation of your circuit you shouldn't be having any problems with that now let's go to the second example I'm going to get rid of this code okay i'm going to leave the config there now we are going to implement our second example our third example for the day now this one says implement an OR gate using RB4 and RB7 as inputs and RB3 as an output. Make use of a 4 megahertz crystal oscillator. That H is supposed to be a big H, not a lowercase H to denote megahertz. Make use of a 4 megahertz crystal oscillator. Very important. It's going to play a role in terms of how your circuit looks like or how it is constructed now rb4 and rb5 as inputs rb3 as an output for our two input or gate that's what we need to do let's start by looking at the circuit and how it's going to look like with the crystal oscillator so this is what we're going to have this is going to be our circuit RB4 and RB5 as our input, still using pull down configuration. But on pin 15 and 16, there you see we have our crystal oscillator connected, our 4 megahertz crystal oscillator connected with calibrating capacitors there, 15 picofarads. Our output is on RB3, which is pin 9 of your pick 16 fe 818 And clear still pull, sorry, pulled high. And then VSS and VDD connected accordingly. That's your second. You are given or you want to implement something, you want to use specific pins, your program and your circuit must correlate. You cannot use in your program certain pins as inputs, but you don't connect those pins on your circuit, you connect other pins. It's not going to work. The pins which you configure as inputs and you test in your program must be the same one connected as inputs on your circuit. So this, the, 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 our example now says, implement an OR gate using RB4 and RB5 as inputs, RB3 as an output. That is the case. RB4 and RB5 as inputs, RB3 as an output. You need to know your hardware, your PIC 16F818, where these pins are right now let's start writing a program but before we go there we start with a flowchart we want now rb4 and rb5 to be inputs well i don't really care about analogs now because i'm not using port a as inputs anyway but I can still disable it, it's nothing wrong. I want RB3 to be my output. And the rest of the other pins must be um, outputs because they are unused. The rest of the unused pins are also going to be outputs. So because I'm not using port A, meaning all port A pins are going to be outputs this time around. Now, I'm going to start testing either RB4 or RB5. So let me start with RB4. It can be either 0 or 1. But now, the logic of the logic operation of the OR gate is different from that of the AND gate. Right. So we have to now see. With um, OR gate, for you to be able to conclude on the output, you will have to test both inputs. Because if any of the inputs is high, the output is going to be high. Even when both are high, the output is high. It's only when they are both zero that the output will be zero. Right. So even if RB4 is zero, I still have to test RB5. 
So RB5 is going to be tested twice. RB5, RB5. Now here RB4 can be either a 0 or a 1. So even if it's a 0 or 1, it doesn't really matter. I still have to test RB5. Right. So let me just align this. And then if RB5 is 1, Let's say I test RB four and I find RB four to be one and then I test RB five and I find RB five to be one. If they are both one, if they are both one, our output which is RB3 must be actually here. I don't even have to test RB5 because if any of the inputs is high, the output is going to be high. For all gate, if any of the inputs is high, so you must know your logic gates very, very well. If any of the inputs is high, your output is going to be high. If any of the inputs is high, the output is going to be high. You don't have to test any because if, if, even if it's 1, 1, the output is going to be high still. But if RB4 is 0, let me test for RB5. If RB5 is 1, if RB5 is 1, my output is going to be my output is going to be 1. But if RB5 is 0, and RB4 was 0 before, then my output is going to be 0. RB3 no and then this goes back to the main. Same applies here. This will go back to me. So this is if our input is zero. So for all gate, you get the logic zero when both inputs are zero. When RB4 is zero and RB5 is zero, the output is zero. Else for any of the other states, your output is one. So we go and write that in the program. We start at the start there, which is ORG. O x zero zero. So this is our reset vector, and we go to initialize, start, or begin. Let me use begin. Let's go to begin, and then we have begin. We have to go to bank one. Bit set five. Status comma RP zero. Now I'm not going to use 
export A as input, so I can just clear this A because I said all other I'm used pins must be outputs. I want RB4 and RB5 to be inputs. Move a value. 0x, this is going to be 30. 30 comes from B4 and B5 being set, and then the rest of the other bits being 0. So basically, in binary, that value is 0, 0, 1, 1. This is bit. 7, 6, 5, 4 are set, and then 3, 2, 1, and 0 are 0. So the four lower bits, this is zero. The four upper bits, that is three. In hexadecimal, it is three zero. Move that three zero into W. Move W to file. Press B. I don't really have to disable analogs because in any case, when you make your pins outputs, the analog feature is disabled by default because that analog works only if the pins are inputs so i don't have to disable analogs there bit clear file status rp0 here i'm going to bank zero yeah i was doing bank one RB4 and RB5 as inputs all port A pins are outputs now <clears throat> my main problem Start by testing, start here by testing RB4. I'm going to use what? Skip if clear is going to help me. We just find skip if clear. Port B RB4. But if it is set, I'm not going to skip. And if it is set, what must happen? If port B4 is set, I must go and set B3. If port B4 is set, I must go and set B3. But if it is clear, I must test B5. So if it is set, I'm going to have a go to because it's not going to skip. Go to set RB3. But if it is not set, if it is clear, I need to test now. If it is not set, it says here, I need to come and test B5. So, B test file, skip if clear still, port B, R, B, 5. If port B5 is set, if B5 is set, I go to the very same label, set B3. Meaning I'm not going to skip. If B5 is set, I'm not going to skip because this one says skip if clear. And if I don't skip, I go to set RB5. RB3, sorry. That's our output. Now, else, if RB5 is not set, what do I do? I clear RB3. Bit clear file, port B, comma, RB3, and then what do I do afterwards? I go to main. Go to main. So the only thing that is missing now is for me to implement this block. Where that block says it's a label set RB3. Copy that block, paste it there. The only thing that I must do there is bit set file for BRB3, and then according to that flowchart, I go back to main. So go to 
Think. That's your program. That's our program. Our two input or gate. Let's start now. You see, our inputs are RB4 and RB5. It's an OR gate. So if any input is high, the output is RB3 is high. If any input is high, the output is high. If they are both zero, the output is zero. If they are both high, the output is still high. Right. And now this is our program, this is a simulation. And I've just shown you the second involved because they said use a former gas crystal oscillator and now the second we had for that is where the crystal oscillator is connected on pin 15 and 16 with capacitors connected to ground and the rest of your circuit rb4 rb5 rb3 is your output right so if you are not just writing this program you want to build the circuit it's very important that you construct the correct circuit for your correct configuration. Now, configuration, this one is for the internal. This assignment said we should use XT, not the internal. So we change this internal to XT, the value becomes 3F29. If you want to use the XT, the crystal oscillator. So this becomes 3F29, you build that. You can program your peak and then start testing your circuit. Right. This assignment or this um, part of the example completed. Let's go to our last one. Now it will be your duty to add more. I'm just going to show you this one and then you can do many more of those. Now. This one says you are expected to implement an AND gate and an OR gate using port A. I think it's supposed to be saying A0 and A1. Let me just see. Um, using port A0 and A1 as inputs and port B2 as an output for the AND gate and B3 as an output for the or gate right basically i say we are going to implement two input and gate and two input or gate in the same program right using the same inputs so we have basically ra0 and ra1 as our two input for the end gate and the very same ra0 and ra1 as our two input for the or gate but the output of the end operation will be rb2 and the output of the OR operation will be RB3. The output of the OR operation will be RB3. The output of the END operation will be RB2. We are using RA0 and RA1 as inputs. Right. Use external RC oscillator. Use external RC oscillator for this. Example, let's look at the circuit for that. Let's quickly look at the circuit for that. And we will have this as our circuit for this example. RA0 and RA1 as inputs. RB2 as the end logic output. RB3 as the all logic output, they are both using those inputs. So we are performing end for these two inputs, and the end, the logic end of that the output comes here. The all of that the output comes on RB3. Right. Now we are using RC oscillator. I mean, this is how you will connect it in your circuit. The value of the resistance capacitor will depend on. The frequency which you want for your RC oscillator. That's basically how you will connect your RC oscillator. MTS still pulled high, ground and VCC connected. Right. This is a circuit. Let's deal with the flowchart. 
flowchart might be a bit of work but we'll see how we can make it easy let's try and edit that um flowchart i'm going to remove most of the things first Okay, let me just remove up until here. Right, and here our inputs are RA0 and RA1. We need to disable analogs because RA0 and RA1 have analogs associated with them. RB2 and RB3. So RB2 and RB3 are our outputs. The rest of the other unused pins are going to be outputs as well. Right, now, let's see what is that we can do. This time around, I think it would be best that we test this very carefully. We are going to, set, we are going to test RA0 first. And then from there, we have to test RA1 on the other side. And then we're going to test RA1. Then we still have to test RA1 again. This is just to make it easy for us. Not to make a mistake in our flow chart. Right. So we are going to test RA one again now um the output of at the end of testing re1 will depend on the gate which we are concerned with we know that our ra0 can be either one or zero same applies to our um same applies to our ra1 but now to make things very very easy not to complicate them we're going to individually do this so let me yeah, no. let me do it this way. We're going to have when we have all of them as zeros, or maybe I might have to move it a bit further. And then do this. And then have another one. Right, and then this one from here. Have the same thing here. So actually, we are, we are having a lot more blocks in our. Room. Then our last one. Now at the end, all of these blocks, they have to
to go to me. Here's the same for these. And now all of this can be either zero or one. So, so zero. One zero one. Now, for let's say now it says uh, um, our example says in, uh, you are expected to implement and gate and or gate using RA zero and RA one as inputs and RB two as output for end gate. RB two as output for end gate. So let's look at the end operation first. Let's look at what's supposed to happen to RB two when we use A zero and A one as inputs. The end operation on RB two. Right. So what is that we are going to do is we say for end operation RB two can only be set when RA zero and RA one are high. So we say RB two. RB2 will be high here. RB2 will be high here. When A0 and A1 are high. But in the rest of them, RB2 will be low. Because if any of them is 0, the end output is 0. So we are doing our end operation. Now it says RB3 as an output for the OR operation. You still using A, A0 and A1 as an input. RB3 becomes the output for the OR operation. Now for OR operation, what is that we need to do? If both are 0, the OR is zero so rb3 will be low here when both ra0 and ra1 are zero rb3 will be zero rb3 represents the all operation rb2 represents the end operation very same inputs now for the rest rb3 will be one because if any of the input is 1, the OR output is 1. So that's basically what we are going to have. So, to try and minimize things, you see, this block and this block are exactly the same. Where RB2 is low and RB3 is high, RB2 is low, RB3 is high. These two blocks are exactly the same. We can just replace a delete one and then um, make it one block. That is, if we want, we can just delete that block and we still have this block but now we need to move this as well to be let's see we do it like that I don't want to do it okay anyway let's leave it like that so we can have that Replacing those two blocks with that single block. Now we have K a block where we have 0, 0, both of them. Uh, 0, 1, and then both of them. Ha, right. So that's the flowchart we need to follow when we write our program. Starting by origin 0, 0, setting up inputs and testing our inputs. Right. So let's go and do that now for this. Origin 00 will still be the same. Let me leave that. Go to begin and go to bank 1. 
So origin 0, 0, that's our reset vector going to begin. At begin, we go to bank 1. We want to make A0 and A1 inputs. Move literal to W. OX03. That will set A0 and A1, making them inputs. Move W to file. Trace A. We want B2 and B3 to be outputs and the rest of the pins. So I'm going to say here file trees B. Now all port B pins are outputs. Here RA0 and RA1 are inputs. I want to disable analogs because I'm using RA0 and RA1 as inputs. I want them to be digital inputs. So I need to disable analogs. I said moving 6 or moving 7 into the AD con 1 register will do that. Will help you disable analogs. And then I can switch back to bank zero where I can read the pins. Bitlier file status RP0. And now I can have my main function. First thing that I have to do at main is to test RA0. So bit test files keep if set. I can use keep if clear, it doesn't really matter. Port A R A0. If it is set, I'm going to skip. Right? But if it is if it is not set, I need to come to here. What is that I'm going to do here? I'm going to test. A1. So go to test RA1. Or when you skip, it comes automatically here. What is that I must do here? I must also test RA1. So that's what I'm going to do. When I skip, I directly do this. I don't want to use a go to there. So I can directly test it. We test file. Skip if set again. Port A, RA1. Now, this RA1, after testing this RA1 at this stage, because I skipped, I went to this side, I can either come to here or go there. Right. But as I skip, if say, if, if it skips, I'm going to come here. But if it doesn't skip, then I have to go to B2 low, B3 high. If it doesn't skip, I go to B2 low, B3. If it is 0, go to I can I can give this label any name. So I want to let's say RB2 low RB3 I can I'm using underscores there. You can use spaces to define a label. And some putting underscores. So I'm going to have to define what or where that thing is. But if I skip, I come here. They are both high. I need to set both RB2 and RB3. So I'm going to say here. Bit set file. Port B RB and now bit set file port b r b 3 this this is going to work and then after that where do i do i go to me go to me okay there's nothing really wrong in terms of the program for setting the bits like this bit set file r b 2 and then after that bit set file rb3 it's just that when it comes to io pins when you set a, 
uh, pin uh, sequentially on this very same port at some point on the hardware it might give you issue on the software and on simulation it will run so let's say you want to set three or four or five pins on the very same port you can do that by writing to the port using move a value into w in this case let's let me use it in banner bit seven is zero six five four I want three to be one, I want two to be one, and then one and zero are zero. So I want to set bit two and bit three. So I say move that value and then move it to port B. It will do exactly these two instructions are doing. It's just that it is doing it in a safer way. Because when you set too many pins on the very same port um, sequentially like this, at some point the other the other one might not be set on the hardware. On simulation it will work perfectly fine, but on the hardware it might give you errors. Because what happens when you set a single bit? The peak uses what we call read modify write process. It first has to read the state of that port B, modifies only the bit you want to set, and write back that state of port B. So when you do this, it performs read, modify, write, and then before it even finishes that read, modify, write, you are already setting another one. So before it finishes that, it has to read and modify and write for this one. It might be reading before that one was updated. Right. So for simulation, and for beginners, this may be good enough for you. But in practice, you may want to avoid using it. So I'm going to avoid doing that. Uh, so here I'm setting B2 and B3. By moving that to port B, go to main. It means now I'm done with this section. I still have to do this section. I still have to do that other one. So let me start with the one on top. Let me start with this one. Oh, the test one. Let me start with the test one. Go to now, at test RA1, this test RA1 is when I came here. What is it that I must do? I must test RA1. Bit test file skip if set. Port A, RA1. And now, if it is set, what must happen? Let's see. If it is set, it must come to this one. But if it is clear, it must go to that one. So let me use skip if clear instead. Skip if clear. So that when it is set, the reason I'm doing this is, when it is set, it's not going to skip, so I'm going to instruct it to go here, which was the same label as this one. So go to this label, it is the same label as that one. So I'm saying skip if clear, but if it is set, if it is set, you don't skip, then you go to this label. Copy that label, put it there. But if it is clear, then what do you do? You need to clear both port B pins. So I can just clear the whole of port B because the rest of the other pins are not used anymore. Clear file port B. Go to main because after clearing that port B, then I have to go to main. Now I now am only left with defining this, which I'm going to at two locations. So I'm saying that actually it's very easy. It says RB2 must be 0, RB3 must be high. So in binary, I can say move literal to W, binary value 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 is 1, 2, and the others are 0. Move that value into W, move W to file, port B, and then go to May.
And now, what is this value in hexadecimal? We are using hex most of the time, so let me stick to hexadecimal. This value in hexadecimal is 0, 08. And now, what is this one in hexadecimal? It is 0, C. Right, that concludes my program. Build this program. Let's go and look at its simulation. Start simulation. A0 and A1S digital inputs. When any of them is high, B3 becomes. When any of them is high, B3 becomes high. When they are both off, both B3 and B4 are, B3 and B2 are off. When, they are, when the inputs are both 0, so A0 is 0, A1 is 1, the outputs are 0. But if any of the inputs are high, say A0 is high. If A0 is high, and now A1 is 0, B3 is high, B2 is 0. Right. If A1 is 0 but A2 is 1, B2 is 0, B3 is 1. But if they are both high, when A0 is high and A1 is high, both A2 and A3 are high. Right. That's basically uh, the last example we are doing for this video. Your task is now add more gates to this program we just did. Maybe end an end gate or an exclusive OR gate. Add more gates, still using the same two inputs. Just add an extra output and then modify your flowchart and your program to implement the addition of that extra uh, logic operation. Uh, guys, I'll see you on the next video. I hope you learned a lot on this one and I'll continue making more videos to, to get you to understand this problem. Thank you.